Chapter 13, five stage accounting system recap. At this point, you should have a reasonable grasp of dumping entry bookkeeping to be able to post entries into books of prime entry from source documents. The books of prime entry are day books, uh, cash book and the petty cash book. There's also one called a journal. Create journals from day books, post those journals to T accounts in the ledgers, and create a trial balance from the balances brought forward or brought down in the T accounts held within the general ledger. In this chapter, we're going to recap all the source documents, day books and ledgers and go through the flow of, of, of accountancy actions because now really in chapters 13 to, to 18, we're just going to sort of improve our exam technique really, but pretty much we're, we're there in terms of the, the level of sort of knowledge that we're required for the exam. We're just going to add a little, couple of little extra, extra marks in there and then just work out the situational positions in the, in the exam questions. The flow of information through an accounting system is termed the five stage accounting system. Whilst it's uh, stages as five stages, this is really classifying actions, documents and records into five categories rather than stages in a linear process from start to finish. The flow of information will go back and forth through the five stages classifications. Uh, information is not a linear in, in, uh, progression through the stages, um, and will, although it will eventually under the trial balance. The five categories are business transaction, into business documents, the business documents being posted into the books of prime entry, the books of prime entry creating journals to post into the ledger accounts, and then the ledger accounts balance down to create a trial balance of all the balances in the, the ledger, in the general ledger, and then you've got the sales ledger and the, and the purchase ledger to be able to reconcile into the purchase ledger control account, the sales ledger control account. In an exam, you're going to be tasked with entering figures into or producing the, the above items um, or simply correct, correct, you know, correctly identifying the stage of an item. You'll only be tasked with entering figures into preset templates. You'll not be tasked with creating the templates from source documents uh, or for the source documents or for the day books. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the flows of uh, information. So let's sort of start with what's happening really. And first of all, we're going to go from negotiation to delivery. So the first thing that's, that's happening is customer discusses prices with the supplier. It's not a financial transaction, not in the stages of the accounting system. And so nothing's happening so far. And we might have, though, after this discussion, a formal quotation provided. So we might have a formal quotation provided that you might produce. Or alternatively, you might have a catalogue, uh, which will sort of set out prices and product codes and whatever. Now, this is a business transaction. We're agreeing the prices and the quantities. The customer then places a purchase order. So you might be asked to sort of take the quotation and put it into a purchase order or a, or a, a sort of a, 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 a sort of catalog and insert the you know, product codes and the quantities that you want to buy into the purchase order. So this is pretty, the purchase order is created by the buyer. And it's a business document and it'll have the buyer's purchase order that they give to it. Now this is the thing that's going to basically give the authorization for the purchase uh, and the things that will be referred to throughout the whole of the, all of the, uh, the sort of sales invoices, etc. So now the, the customer's placed the order. The supplier's going to send out the goods. So they're going to send out the goods and, and when they send out the goods, they want to make sure that, that uh, somebody's going to sign for the goods. So they provide a delivery note with the goods really as the proof of what's been dispatched. So they'll have the information sort of on there. So you might have a purchase order and you might then you need to convert or put those information into the delivery note, let's say. This again, business document. But the person who receives the goods at the at the uh, supply at the buyer's end uh, on reception or whatever, or at the front the front gate, is not usually the, the final end person that's going to actually have the have the goods and check the quality. So there also um, might be a goods inwards note, and this goods inwards note is from is from the buyer. So the buyer produces the goods inwards note, the seller produces the delivery note. Buyers producing the goods inwards note, and they're sort of saying how much they actually really received. You know how much was really received by by in, in this in this sort of sale sale that's happened in here. And uh, was a quality of the information. Sign for who is set to the delivery, sign for who sort of checked the quality, might also be signed for who has put it in the warehouse and where it's been put. You just have to sort of see what the what the information is. But there's no set uh, layouts for any of these any of these documents. It's all they're all relative to the to the company itself. So goods in which notes could be checked to the delivery notes, both of them could be checked to the purchase order, or well, the purchase order be coming from or checked for the quotation. So at this point the goods have been delivered. In the next bit, then now the supplier wants to be paid. And so the supplier prepares a sales invoice, and that sales invoice is a business document. So it's a sales invoice for the supplier. So the person who's selling, the seller, is, it creates, creates the sales invoice, and they call it the sales invoice. Now a copy of that sales invoice is given to the buyer. So the, so the buyer has a copy of that sales invoice, and they call it a purchase invoice. So it's the same document. It's the sales invoice for the seller, the purchase invoice for the buyer. 
So there's there isn't like a two different documents here that you know, the, the buyer isn't creating their own personal purchase invoice. No, the sale the supplier is providing the invoice. The reason why the supplier is providing it is that it's got the supplier's VAT number on there, and that's for the purposes of, of, of you know, the payment and recovery of VAT. The supplier enters the credit sale. So if it's on credit, into the sales daybook. So they enter, if it's on credit, they're going to enter it into the sales daybook, and from that they'll produce the journals. And so they'll produce your debit, trade, uh, trade receivables control account, and the debit, the trade receivables uh, ledger, and that credit VAT, credit sales. If they're, if they're cash sales, it'll be entered into the cash book. So you know, uh, it will be your know, debit uh, bank and credit VAT, credit sales. So these are books of prime entry here. The cash book could also be a book of prime entry and, and the account in the leg in the general ledger as well. If we put the brought forward balance and the carry forward balance into the cash book, most typically is going to be that, that, that position because we need to be able to do bank reconciliations later on. So that's why we typically have in a manual system the cash book being the book of prime entry and also the, the, uh, the bank account within the general ledger. The customer enters credit sales in the purchases day book. So they're going to go debit purchases, debit VAT, uh, credit trade payables control account and the customer and the, and the, uh, the supplier account within the, the, uh, the purchase ledger. So this again is a daybook used to create those journals in there. Uh, you know, so book, daybook, book of prime entry. So now we've got to a position where, where we've got you know, amounts to be paid uh, or until we've actually paid them. In terms of payments for, um, you know, on credit, so credit payments in here, the supplier wants to be paid. Uh, and so they might uh, you know, follow up, but also they might provide uh, as a bit less of an aggressive position. They might supply a supplier statement showing the amounts that are due and the, 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 sort of the amounts that are built up. They're due and the amounts that are previously paid in there. So this is a statement of accounts. If you ask to classify, it's going to be a business document then. Really. Uh, so it's a statement of account of, of, of what the actual position is. It's from the supplier's perspective. So it's from the supplier's perspective. So it's going to be uh, you know, a debit is going to be a positive, positive uh, you know, an amount owed. Uh, for, uh, by the customer, uh, whereas for the customer, obviously, it's a credit. The customer pays, uh, and when the pay, customer pays, they're going to enter that payment into the, the, the cash book, which is a day book. Uh, if they paid in cash, well, they're going to be providing you know, the, the VAT and the, uh, the purchase in there. If they're paying, uh, if, if they pay on credit in there, well, they, the, ca the VAT and the purchase figures are already been calculated in the purchase day book. So all that is going to be the total amount that's going to be going uh, credit, bank. Uh, debit the purchase ledger control account. The customer might want to remind the supplier that they've paid, uh, particularly if they take advantage of a prompt payment discount. So this is again, uh, so they might send a remittance advice to the supplier saying, "I paid this amount, and this is what it was made up of," and that's a business document. Now you might have a question that uh, that we would have a sort of a supplier a, a remittance advice being reconciled into a uh, into a sales ledger. Or you might have a supplier statement being reconciled into a purchase ledger. You know, so you've got the two, two, two bits, the buyer and the seller, and, that, and you're sort of going to reconcile which ones, you know, the, the, the two figures, which bits are, are incorrect uh, in, in those two things, which bits are missing, which bits are incorrect, or which bits are outstanding. So the supplier enters the payment for credit sales into their cash book. Uh, so they've, they've entered it into uh, their, their cash book. I mean, they also um, you know, enter cash payments as well into, into their cash book as, as well. So, so that, that's, that's, that's where, where we are in terms of payments now being made. Now, what happens if, if the sales invoice is inaccurate or needs to be changed? And the supplier issues a credit note. Okay, so the supplier will issue the credit note again, like the sales supplier issuing the sales invoice, and the supplier is going to issue the credit note as well. There's going to be the sales credit note for the seller and a purchase credit note for the buyer. And that's going to be put into uh, sales return for the seller. So the sales returns this uh, book of prime entry for the seller, and it's going to be uh, entered into the purchase returns book of prime entry for the buyer. Let's, have, let's consider that the purchaser takes advantage of a, of a, dis, of a, of a, of a discount, like a prompt payment uh, discount in here. Uh, so for the, the purchaser, that's going to be a discount. Uh, sorry, for the, the uh, seller, that's going to go into the discount allowed day book. So the seller is allowing this discount in here. The buyer is going to put it into the discount received day book. And they're going to put it in there. So for the seller, it's discount allowed. So it's going to be debit discounts discounts allowed. Uh, as we said, the expense in there. And then it's going to be credit uh, the um, I'm going to go debit discounts allowed and we're also going to go debit VAT we we'll have to pay the VAT on that, that net figure that's been reduced and we're going to have the, then credit the trade receivables uh, control account for the buyer it's going to be uh, you know, sort of um, credit our uh, credit our discounts received 
we're going to credit the VAT because we're not going to get that VAT back now, and we're going to go debit the trade uh, trade payables control again. Now it might be a question that we might have to produce a credit note as well if there's insufficient information on the invoice. So if the invoice, the invoice would typically have VAT is due on all, all amounts paid in there. If it doesn't have it on that amount, then you, you actually have to then produce a credit note for a discounts, discounts allowed or prompt payment discounts. Now it could be a question that the, the exact, the question might actually sort of say, what do you need to do here? Produce a credit note, let's say in a, in a series of scenarios. It's a bit sort of questionable that one really, because you might not actually have to do it, but that might be the only answer that actually fits within the question. So you just have to sort of roll with it really on that one. It's never, never quite straightforward that, that particular, that particular question if it's asked. Now let's move on to, on to other, other business documents. So we've got a bank statement here. Bank statement is a statement of account, so it's a, going to be a business document and that, that's going to be used to check the cash book for missing entries. So we do a reconciliation between the bank statement and the bank account, or other than the cash book, sorry. So between the bank statement and the, and the cash book, and then we do about what's known as a bank reconciliation. You'll do that in principles of, of bookkeeping controls, you know? uh, but you do, you, I highlight it in this in this book because it also highlights the way that you actually, the cash book needs to be both the book of prime entry and also as well the, the ledger account because part of the reconciliation requires you to tick all the, all the items between the cash book and the bank statement. And you couldn't get ready to work if, if you didn't really, if you only use the cash book as a book of prime entry. Then you might also as well have petty cash. So petty cash vouchers. So staff members incurring incidental expenses, so small amounts of expenses that are going to be reclaimed, or they might make really small sales, like you know, people just want to sort of post a letter through our, our own franking machine or whatever. And there. Um, now managers will authorise petty cash vouchers, which is a business document. So the, the managers will authorise petty cash vouchers for the, for, the, um, for the staff member. Now, although this is usually very small amounts in there, because it is cash and because it would undermine the culture of the organisation if uh, you know, there were dodgy petty cash uh, payments being made uh, and there, there's sort of quite an extensive amount of controls that go around uh, you know over the purchase of a 15 pence apple uh, but you, know, you just have to sort of go, go through it you might in the, in the question be asked to complete a petty cash voucher or to transfer petty cash vouchers to the cash book or more likely as well to run an impress system in the petty cash uh, cash book so the impress system which is really uh, from its in, from the latin impresto which just means a loan you're always getting back to a particular amount let's say 100 pounds or 150 pounds whatever it is in the question and uh, whatever the brought forward uh, balance is in the start of the, the uh, petty cash book typically that's going to be the impressed amount that we've, we've agreed now, in terms of errors that need to be corrected, where do they actually go? Because there's not a day book for those that we've sort of seen so far. No. You're going to see this in the principles of, of bookkeeping controls, but it's possible, but just in case uh, there is a question of produce a journal, uh, where would it actually go? It goes into a, into a day book called the journal. So journals are prepared, which go into the general ledger, whatever. And the one that is, a, is produced under the special uh, special journals, um, things like depreciation as well as extended trial balances in level three advanced bookkeeping, they go through this book called the journal, uh, which is controlled typically by the financial controller or financial director, uh, because it's very easy to sort of create uh, frauds, uh, if, uh, or, or, or more, more particularly errors, if everybody had, had access to the journal. Even in a digital system, well, the journal will be controlled. You know, these, these particular journals will be controlled by password entries. So we've now gone and posted all of our, our all of our business documents to Daybooks. We've produced journals from the Daybooks. We've posted the journals into the general ledger accounts, and the general ledger then holds all the balances of all the different accounts. In there. So then we balance them all down, and then at the end of it, we balance them all down, and we use that to produce the trial balance. So. The, the end of the and all of our brought forward balances, and what our, uh, our carried forward balances, and then going into brought forward balances, create the trial balance uh, accounts. So that is the five stage accounting system. Uh, go backwards and forwards, make sure in the exam you, you just understand who's who's what is the direction of money for the particular uh, journal that you're having to create in terms of money in, money out, and therefore whether it's debits or credits really. The tricky thing is to, to calculate the VAT. Uh, also, as well, it's going to be you know recognizing between. Uh, trade discounts and bulk discounts, which will be on uh, the sort of the, the sales invoices and uh, let's say purchase invoices or, 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 or purchase invoices or what have you, and uh, prompt payment discounts that won't. They'll, they'll, they won't they won't be actually on the invoices as well. Typically, a bit of a tricky question trying to put just discounts and seeing whether you'll you'll uh, you'll accidentally put a prompt payment discount on the on a sales invoice. Um, 
the tricks uh, really in terms of just making sure that you've actually got, the, got the, who is who is the buyer and who is the seller and therefore what is the book of book of prime entry that's going to be used to create the journals and just being methodical and neat that, that's that's about it uh, really and we'll see coding later on in chapter 14 where, where there might be some tricky bits on that one uh, but that's that's really our, our, our trial balance um, or our, our, our five phase system getting to the trial balance